Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do Snowmobiles, Yamaha revs your heart, MBRP Performance Exhaust built for the victory lap, and by iPone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. A few weeks ago, Skidoo called me up and said, "Hey, you want to come ride the 2023s?" And of course, I said, "Absolutely." It was an awesome time to be able to go out and not just talk to the engineering staff and the marketing folks, but also get first-hand ride experience on all of the new 2023s from Skidoo. And let me tell you, there's a whole bunch of new stuff. Pascal Vincent and I were able to have a chat and he brought us up to speed on exactly what's new from the yellow brand. For Mario 23, we have a brand new platform that we call the Rev Gen 5. And as you can see on this uh, Renegade XRS, uh, first of all, the first thing you will, you will see is the body style, that's for sure. Uh, but key elements of the new body style, as you can see, is the new LED headlight um, that are three times more uh, or brighter, I should say, than the Rev, uh, Gen 4 that we used to have. Uh, also, the body is narrower. So when you are on the, uh, in the comfort position, you can see your spindle. So. You know, it's mantle, but uh, it's really, really interesting. So it gives you a performance aspect of it. Um, other than that, we focused uh, a lot on NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. And we added some padding inside of the uh, side panel to uh, reduce the sound. So the goal is to elevate uh, the level of refinement on the, on the Rev Gen 5 for Model Year 23. One of the uh, key elements of the NVH, aside of the side panel, we have now a four engine mount instead of three uh, that rigidify the whole system, but also, believe it or not, reduce the NVH as well. So because we played with the, uh, the, the duro uh, of the uh, rubber mount. So that helps a lot to reduce vibration. So you can feel it instantly when you start the engine and the first uh, 100 feet, let's say. And let me tell you guys, Pascal is not joking at all. Right away you notice from the handguards not flopping around that the vibration is reduced. But as soon as you get on the sled and you accelerate, you feel it through the hands and the feet, or rather the lack thereof feeling it, which lets you know that the NVH has been dramatically improved for 2023. For 23, on the MXZ uh, line, we have uh, now the MXZ Blizzard and the MXZ XRS. So we combine into the Blizzard, uh, the TNT and the X. So TNT and X are, are not there anymore. We have the Blizzard, but we improve or we enhance the feature on the Blizzard with piggyback front shocks and a lot of uh, great features uh, to increase the value of it. And you have this one, uh, uh, this, this is the Renegade, but uh, on the MXZ XRS. As far as the Renegade, we still have the Renegade Adrenaline, 850, as well as the Renegade X and Renegade XRS. And all the Rev Gen 5 will host the 850 e -Tech. Okay, so everything else remain on the Rev Gen 4 platform. So basically uh, that's that's it for MXZ and Renegade. As far as Summit, Summit and Freeride. So Summit SP, Summit Edge, Summit X, Expert Package and Freeride in the 850 e-tech are all on the RevGen 5 platform. The 600 e-tech uh, is not in the summit anymore, at least for 23. So all summits will be on 850 for model year 23. And when it comes to summits, there's so many improvements that it's hard for me to remember and touch on all of them. But let me say this, those of you who ride in the mountains are going to be very, very happy. And why I say this is because of the immense improvements of the entire sled. The side panels are three inches narrower to keep the sled from paneling out, 
The clutch cover and side panel are integrated into one and also features a backing plate, much like a side-by-side -side or ATV. So the clutches are sealed, allowing the fins on the clutches to actually pump air in and out of a dedicated intake and exhaust, therefore increasing belt life. Weight of the mountain sled is reduced by anywhere from six to 16 pounds, depending on your spec level. And this comes from the slender spandex type bodywork and a decrease in the thickness of parts of the sled's aluminum tunnel, as well as reduction in the heat exchanger size in the tunnel and therefore less coolant. The rear T-Motion X and XT also feature heavily relieved rail profiles that help add up those weight saving ounces. Now the biggest area of improvement that you're going to be excited to hear about is in the engine department. No, not the four motor mounts that reduce vibration, although those are very beneficial. Nope, the big news comes by way of the turbo. And with the 2023 turbo comes a new little acronym attached to the graphic brought to you by the letter R. And that R, much like all of BRP's engines with all of the red R attached, means more power. The 850 Turbo R is now 180 horsepower. And man, does it feel incredibly strong. Even when I was riding it at 9,000 feet altitude, it's strong, it's aggressive, and it will leave you with a permanent smile you're not gonna be able to wipe off your face. Now there's a lot of other very cool features on the summit, like the 34 inch ski stance and the LED headlights, but something that carries through both on trail and mountain for the G5 is the lower chain case gear. It's a new type of lower chain case gear that does not require you to split the chain case or take that gear out of the chain case to do a track swap. No more breaking the chain case, no more oil on the floor, no more cleanup. There's all kinds of rear suspension geometry changes on the summits, as well as tracks with full width lugs, some tracks with full width non-flex edge rods, as well as the new DS4 ski and changes to the expert limiter strap adjustment from 30 millimeters and now up to 50 millimeters of adjustment. But you get the idea. This G5 Summit is completely redesigned. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride on our strength. Now moving back to features that affect both of these sleds, there's one big area that we hounded Skidoo about massively last year that's changed in a big way. For well, Mario 23, we have a, a new 10, point, uh, 10 and a quarter inch uh, color display, touch screen with BRP Connect. So it's a fully loaded gauge, which is offered as an option, by the way. But we, uh, we've been hashed by a consumer, by the media, you guys, uh, what, what's happening? Where's the, uh, the di digital gauge? So here, here it is. So uh, first of all, it's fully integrated into the cockpit. It's not something off the shelf. It's fully purpose built for uh, BRP products. It's a uh, touch screen, but also you can control with a new control module. You have a next level of connectivity, obviously. Uh, it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. You can do over the air updates for the gauge. So you hook your gauge to your Wi-Fi and your garage on your house, and then you can you can update uh, all the all the, the latest feature. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, the other element we uh, we improve or we ease the process of pairing your phone to the gauge. So it's super easy, as easy as in your car. So you pair it, you see the number, you accept, then it's paired. And every time you will start the engine, the, the, your phone will be paired automatically in seconds. The gauge is sweet, fully integrated, and looks like something that Tesla would have built. The cool part about it is that you can control it from the left hand, all new hand control cluster, or also it's fully touchscreen integrated. I mean, are you getting the picture? 2023 for Skidoo is huge. And wait, all of the information, it just continues to get bigger. Well, actually that's not true. The next info is a little bit smaller. Neo is new this year. So uh, we have Neo and Neo Plus on both MXZ and Summit. Let's talk about where it's coming from. We, um, for years, we've been talking about having an entry-level sled, a mid-size sled, but you know, it was always <laughs> at the bottom of the list. We were focusing on those big, uh, interesting, uh, big vehicles. So we said this year, it, it is the year because uh, COVID brought new entrants new consumers into the snowmobile market and they're not all they are not all you know uh, gearhead and power sport enthusiasts full passionate and a lot power 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 so we created that neo package so uh, if i'm starting with the mxz neo uh, this is the base model very affordable and you get a uh, lower ride height it's about three inches lower narrower handlebar lower seat 
So it is fitting, it fits in fact a much smaller ergonomic. So smaller people, you know, smaller frame people, uh, you. So it's not specific for one person. Anyone who would like to uh, to uh, start into the sport, the MX Zinio is there. We have um, two engine choices. Uh, so on all four uh, models, we have a 600 EFI engine. The Neo comes at 40 horses, so very uh, manageable, smaller throttle for smaller ends. And if you put the $800 more on the table, you get the Neo Plus. Neo Plus, you get color, uh, new graphic, uh, you get um, hand guards, you get um, an improved power, so you get 55 horsepower over the 40, and uh, other uh, interesting features. So very still affordable, extremely fun to ride. Uh, I'm pretty sure I will buy two of them <laughs> for me and my son because it's really fun. Suspension on the on the MX Neo and Neo Plus is a totally redesigned suspension. There's uh, just one shock, uh, and the goal was to reduce the cost as much as possible. So the goal is not to it's not a ditch banger. It's a very fun sled uh, to go smoothly on the trail, but it's still very very capable still. Uh, but that's what drives you know uh, this new suspension. We call it the Neo suspension. The MX Neo comes with a 14-inch wide track by a, a one-inch profile. And when you get the Neo Plus, this track is now going to 15 inch and a quarter. So more traction, a little bit more width traction as well as the lug. So once again, for 800 bucks, you get a lot of value. Electric start on both. So MX Neo and MX Neo Plus. So uh, MX Neo, MX Neo Plus, and we do have also Summit Neo and Summit Neo Plus. Summit Neo comes with a 14 inch wide track by 146 by uh, 1.6 inch. And when you up for Neo Plus, it gets in 15, still 146 by a 1.75 inch lug profile. So once again, you have more value for 800 bucks to get all of those values. Very, very cool. I don't need to tell you that 2023 is a massive year for Skidoo. Make sure you stop by your Skidoo dealership or go to their website to check out everything that's new for 2023 and to get your spring order in because these things are gonna go fast. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. really tired of you guys all asking us which of these two sleds is faster you want to know of the new turbos which is the fastest skidoo has their 900 ace turbo r and yep. you know the genesis turbo that's been around for a while and you guys won't stop talking about which one's faster i don't really mind i mean i wonder too so it's 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 okay uh and i know first question let's just get it out of the way we don't have an srx and we don't have a mock z um, Moxie, because it was limited build, we had one at the end of last year, but we don't have one this year. They sold out of them in like 13 seconds. Yeah. So uh, we don't have those on the ground, but these two are very similar. All in all, we got the same track length. We do have electric shocks on both, similar, uh, you know, similar spec packages on both of these sleds. We also have a draggy. So we're not just gonna do a side by each and say, oh, this one's faster, that one's faster. And then somebody can say, well, the peak on his helmet's bigger than the peak on his. <laughs> I did have hmm. a six inch sub and a cookie this morning for, for yeah. lunch, so. I went to Tim Hortons. So oh, well then we're I've, even. Yeah, we're, we're even, even. we're even. Um, so we will use actual hard data from the draggy. Uh, that's what we're gonna base this off of. We're gonna switch riders, so it doesn't <laughs> yeah. really matter who's on what. Um, we've done this in the past. We realized that one person can't drive one sled, the other person <laughs> drives the other sled. So we will switch back and forth for yeah. all of the data runs. Yep. There's no big guy versus little guy. Um, and there's also, Yes, we could tune these snowmobiles. Yes, we could put thousands of dollars into tuning into these snowmobiles. And yes, we could put thousands of dollars worth of studs on these snowmobiles, but that would be completely subjective to what we do to each sled. 
Therefore, testing them in their bone stock state is really the best way to do this. I know takeoff isn't gonna be the same. Acceleration is gonna be different. We get all of these things, but if you really wanna shoot out two sleds that are identical, we either have to go through a new, well, you can't, you can't tune them identically. This is the only way to make it fair. This, this is, is the way how they it. come from the factory. Yes. This is how we test them. What you guys do in your spare time modifying, that's your business. You can get 230 horsepower of each of these if you choose to, but this is what matters most, not what you can do, what they will do. Yeah, let's get this done. Let's get out on the snow. Let's get out and do this. Let's go. Maybe I didn't go far enough on that last one. It's still saying 93 miles an hour. Just under 170. Okay, let me switch and try this. Uh, so I'm just switching over. I got the draggy numbers for <coughs> the uh, Renegade. And now I'm just gonna try it on the Thundercat just to see because if GPS numbers are correct, <laughs> The, speed, the speedo on the skidoo is quite a little optimistic. Uh, and I mean, GPS is GPS. This says it's verified. Like, so I'll be interested to see what the Arctic Cat says because, yeah, these speedos may not be reading exact. This does 99, that does 93. What did it do in the half? 98.69. Yeah. This is definitely a faster snowmobile. Yeah. Do you want to switch up and give me the draggy? Yeah, we can. All right. That's yeah. a, that's a, well, we'll see what happens, but. I'm going to run the speed. Yeah, there's right away a significant difference, and we will have to look in to see if there's a significant difference in gearing between these two sleds, but the lug of the track and the length of the track are telling me that there probably isn't too much of a difference there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's a pretty big change. 93 miles an hour on the Skidoo, 99 miles an hour on the Arctic Cat. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, Yamaha, Revs your heart. The regions of Quebec by the sea. Discover our ride ideas. FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. And by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles. Ninety-six is what yours said. So you got three miles an hour more than I did. So maybe sitting down like that saves a bunch. What we've come to conclusion here is you're much better to eat at Subway than to Morton's in the morning. Well, it might, it yes. might be so. Red 170 that time. <laughs> I didn't go quarter mile or whatever because uh, I hit a huge patch of ice when I took off and it just spun forever. Oh. So it was gonna be really slow. 100 mile an hour. So I picked up one. So you're still picking up speed after the half mile. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's try it again then. One hundred and two. What? What? Yeah. All right. You need to get on that and do a okay. couple passes yeah. on the T-cat then. What did we learn? Well, I think definitively, these two snowmobiles are very close, but the king of the castle with the claimed 200 horsepower 
I think we can fairly it's say, still based just, off GPS, it's still just a little bit faster. We've got 102 out of the Skidoo and 105 out of the Arctic Cat. They both continue to get faster throughout the day as we tested. Until and I, a point. And, well, until a point, and then the Arctic Cat was faster. It yeah. just ended up that we can't get any more out of either. This one's three miles an hour faster. And I think it's valid, like you said, because we used the Draggy, is GPS verified. It's not just seat of the pants. It's certainly not the Speedos that we're, we're going to listen to. <laughs> no, they both, both read over 180. <laughs> both Speedos, <laughs> and it's not track spin. Like, no. we, are, we are getting good, compacted snow out here. They're just not reading accurately. No. They're, they're trying just... to make you feel good. Yeah, they're, they're, a little, they're a little faster than they are. Now, maybe with studs on a perfectly prepared ice track, this thing could go 110. Maybe it could. I think we've definitively determined that the Arctic Cat with the turbo is still a little bit faster. The Skidoo is very admirable at 102. And truthfully, at 102 miles an hour to 105, it's going to be the temperature on the day, the track path you're in. Oh, the uh, track path you're in is going to be the It's going to be one. huge. Yeah, you're... Yep. you're Lane choice is everything. It's not a huge difference, but if you race into the end of the lake, the Arctic Cat's gonna get there first. I'm actually really pleased with this because I thought that the Skidoo seed to the pants feel, I felt like it was a little bit like, you know, I thought it was gonna be significantly slower than the Arctic Cat. I always felt that this was a faster sled, the Yamaha or the Arctic Cat, uh, which isn't really the case. It's not all that much faster. I mean, three miles an hour is not a big deal. So we're not talking like 100 to 110. It's, it's very small, yeah. almost insignificant, but we can still say that this is a faster sled.